So right now, look, I'm wanting to swing over here and, and work over here, which I can do. But remember when I was opening up the avenue of travel for myself, the alley of which uh, my mobility came from? I left this one because it was a little bit big and unwieldy to mess with at the time. But now when I try to swing this way, it's hampering me. Imagine how much more travel I would have without it. That just reinforces what I was telling you earlier. I mean, what if I had done no preparation of my route at all? I'd be hampered later. I'd be held in one spot a lot more. This isn't bad, but I thought it was worth mentioning. This is like my avenue where I'm gonna be moving laterally and stuff. So I'm gonna open it up because later when I'm moving lateral and I come into something like this, I won't like it. As long as I got the rigging line here, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, put me on a couple slings. Okay, so I've showed this one a million times, but I'm gonna show it again. I got this limb. It goes right out over that shrub. I don't really want to destroy it, even though I am allowed to. Um, I could just do the one limb, but but if I go ahead and hook up another one here with a sling, these are in our on my store too. These slings in various amounts and with various accoutrements, but it's a speed line kit. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll cut off that one. Then I'll have them hold it up, and then I'll bomb this one into it, and we'll get them both at the same time. Because otherwise I'd be fiddling around with it like you saw me before, where I'm kicking it with my foot and doing things to keep it from crashing into the landscape below. Okay, get on the rope. So now they got two instead of one. And all I had to do was have a little sling on my harness or 10 or 20, depending on the need. I cannot resist it. I'm gonna have to go over there and do a little bit of cleanup work on that fur. That tree stays behind and it's gonna look weird if, if I was right next to it and I didn't do anything about those broken limbs. Okay. So I'm wearing spurs. And so I'm being careful to step on the limbs only with my boots and not my spurs. Although it could be argued that stepping on the tops of the limbs in the springtime is just as damaging because the bark is tender. Although I haven't done any damage yet. So the idea is conscientiousness. <laughs> on the trunk with my toes and using pressure against the flip line for positioning rather than gaffing in. That's one of those things where they're probably going to send you, they're probably going to ask about those dead limbs later when you come down anyway, because they're exposed. They've never been seen before because the other tree was right up against them. And um, they've been covered by green and now they're exposed. So if you don't cut them, you're probably going to end up going up and, you know, and you could argue, yeah, well, we'll negotiate a price for that. Or you could just do it. And if they're cool, which they almost always are, then they, they know that you've gone above and beyond. 
and um and, and if there's no money in it then then you know that you went above and beyond there's a time to definitely just focus on what you got in front of you though because you know sometimes people will take advantage oh it's all balance you know don't be a doormat but have some integrity it's all balance so this one i'll be able to swing it around it'll clear that in other words it won't get hung up put it down <laughs> Troll guy would say it didn't clear it touch. <laughs> well, it was pretty good. <laughs> Not all trolls are trolls. Some of them just are opinionated people with words. want to go so fast but I'll talk about this one this one if I cut it this way well then that would mean that the holding wood on the bottom here would be the last thing holding and so it would take the limb that way a little before it came off which would put it right on that shrub if I cut it flat through it'll miss the shrub just to the right if I cut it at an angle like this then the holding wood the last bit of it will be over here and it'll actually take the limb this way flat is good enough but I'll give it a little extra see the shrub? See the limb? do you see it so basic I know super duper basic but I'm learning because I'm learning how to fly I'm learning that all the things that the instructor like things that are super basic to him um, I may have no clue like even the tiny details and so I'm learning, well, what if that happens when I'm trying to teach tree work? And I know that it does. So that's why I'm getting super intricate here. Look how married up this thing is. But it's also kind of up at an angle like this. It might be easier to pull it down than it would be to mess with rigging it. So you watch, I'll hang it up. And because it's held out there, I mean, unless it rolls off down into here, which would suck. But if it stays there until this comes off, then this way it'll go that way and it might end up clearing. Let's let's try it out. Because you gotta have fun in your life too. You gotta take a few chances. Oh no. Then there's that. <laughs> then there's that. Uh, it was going really well. Okay, you want to play like that. I'll show you a fun game, YouTube. When you have a hung up thing, you can clear it with another thing. be talking about this stuff so you see there now I'm mixing the things I've done right 
some of them I just free fell from the back. Boom, boom, boom. And then when I got to one that needed to swing under a little bit to clear something out there, well, I swung it under until I knew it would clear and then I speed cut it through. You see that? Little tricks, little things. Keep it tight. I was playing a little game there YouTube when when you have energy loaded that wants to come back like this be careful with that I'll talk about that some other time but I knew I was gonna be clear of it I wasn't ignorant to it for those that saw that what was what was coiling to strike there but it was uh, it was a thing that you can create by the way you rig a thing but if you know you're doing it, then you'll know where to stand, where to place your body. All right, here's a little something I could show you. Sometimes you get to cut one for free. See this one? It's going to be married up. Not going to come down if I cut it, which is cool because I can, I can use gravity after I cut it to force it down through here. It's going to be kind of guided and redirected by all of these other parts. And you can do that sometimes. You get like a free cut. You didn't have to rig it. Keep in mind though, this V right here could end up swallowing that like before. <laughs> I wanted to get it cut off, okay, because the more I tip it, the more it gets tied up out there. The faster I cut it off, the more I allow gravity to get an initial, an initial running start at, at bringing it down and out. So, I directed the butt this way so that the, that V doesn't swallow the butt. This is basic, huh? <laughs> Don't get no more. It had so much velocity, I was worried for the asphalt. This one here, will, if I cut it off, it'll hang up. It'll fall quite a ways and hang up. And it'll be pulling it, trying to pull it out of there uphill. And I, my back won't enjoy that. So this one, I'm gonna tip tie like I showed you before. I've got the rigging line and I've just attached it to my bridge here. That's a good place to keep it, you know, while you, while you go out the limb. I'm doing this slow for you, showing how, how I'm going out the limb, poking, a, poking my spurs right into this limb, see? Can you see it? Now I can take my rigging line. I'm not cutting, I'm just tied in once. So I don't have to worry about falling or anything because I'm not using a saw. I have no cutting instruments. Okay. Tip tie this limb like that. That's enough butt weight right there. And then I can go back. I could walk back slow or I could swing over. I'll just go nice and gentle. Now, okay, now if my guys were busy, they just told me on the radio that people were walking through and I said, okay, okay, so now if my guys were busy, I would hold this with one hand. This is the rigging line, see? 
do that and I would cut with the other hand and I'd do it all myself but since we're not doing that today somebody hold the rope pull down on it pretty tight there you go keep it like that this limb is gonna go whack and then down right through there it is not rocket surgery or brain science V got me again. Yeah, that was way easier to clear with the rigging line. Sure, I had to go hook it up, but I wasn't tugging on, you know, breaking all the twigs off of the fir tree and hurting my back. Okay, now it's gonna get a little more fun because we get to rig a big piece. I'm just gonna hook this up probably just cut it like right here and rig the whole thing it probably has enough weight that it'll come unmarried it'll divorce itself from the canopy up there and I think it'll come on down if not well then we'll cripple it and then we'll go up there and kick it out this one's gonna weigh more Jeff I have I have this terminal I'm using a rigging snap here I've got it there this could be a running bowlin. Somebody will say that's the way you should do it every time or something. I don't think so. And then I have a half hitch here. And watch when this thing turns over. Well, now the half hitch is going to be on top and the terminal connection is going to be underneath. I rarely do this. You could also just take this and put it over like this. And then you know that this could never slip off because it couldn't slip past the limbs or you could uh i'm gonna stop talking now I've, let's just do this you ready yeah. oh i should put a camera so that my people can see so youtube what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this cut and then i'm just gonna swing right over here away from it you know because it's a big piece and it's leaving. pretty big piece and it's gone and it's well controlled and it was fun now we'll do the log okay so YouTube this time I'm showing this is called a marl or a half hitch this time it's working the other direction it's not gonna turn over it's gonna stay in this orientation because the the butt weight is so much so this is this is tip tied okay there's probably a you know i could probably just push chunks of wood down on the ground there but this way i can rig a, a big piece of wood all at once it's not going to bang up any irrigation or anything down there get this one kind of tight uh jeff I'm going to cut it so that it just slides off. He doesn't have to run it or nothing. way not only so the piece would come off smooth but also 
I no longer have anything that will hang up my rigging of anything above me. Do you understand? Here we have another one. We got a limb here. So I'm not gonna put any half hitch backup on this. There's no way this is gonna slip off when it inverts, okay? So this one will be a little bit married. And uh Yeah, hey Doug. Yo. The other tree yeah. took this space. Yeah, yeah. And so what it did is it caused uh, nothing to want to grow here on the fir tree. Sure. Also, it caused a lot of these to die. So I cut off the dead ones and I cut off the ones that were weak. Well, is it, is it going to be a problem? There's nothing wrong with it. It's it just that you've never seen it like this. Right. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. 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 It's the same tree, just that one's gone now. It, it took its clothes off. Yeah, that, that this one, this one took the light from this one, and so this side, it'll still look great from the other side. <laughs> so, is there anything you can do to make it look better? I did. You did. You did. Yeah, I cut the dead limbs off, and I cut off the ones that had been held up by this one. Will it eventually? Well, it'll try. Yeah, it'll fill in a, because there'll be light here. Yeah, it, it'd be like that, right down the line, yeah. till they were all gone. Yeah. Well, what would you recommend? I already did what, what I would recommend, which is cut off the dead ones, okay. and I cut off the ones that were so weak. In other words, they were held up by this. So I cut off the support. When I cut off the support of something that's always been held by something else, well, then it just starts to droop and break. Yeah. So like uh, this one, yeah. see, this one was gonna break if I left it because it was about 10 feet longer than this. Oh, wow. So I cut, I, love that. I left this so to try to have something to fill in. Uh -huh. If I hadn't cut it back, the whole thing would have broke. Right. Yeah. So it, it's a little bit of a weirdo. Um, but time will change. It'll fill in some. It will either look, start to look better or start to look worse, huh? Uh, and as long as it stays healthy, it'll always look better than this. Because it'll fill in. Okay. But it'll never be... It'll never be like it grew in the open with nothing around it. Yeah. See, YouTube, I knew I'd end up explaining that. All right, Jeff, let's rig a piece. I gotta go soon.
This is a little snap cut. The grain is this way, so it should stay until I pop it off. I was trying to get it right through there without damaging any more of the greenery here. Another snap cut on a limb. And I believe I kept my hands on the saw. So you, you kind of want to route the, see this limb or this this rope is over a limb. It'll never slip off once the weight hits it, okay? Also, I have it routed out here in front so that when I'm making the back cut, I'm not hitting the rope. You always want to make sure that your rigging line is not running across uh, your climbing lines, your flip lines, anything that you don't want burnt. You ready? Oh, I gotta put my audience somewhere. I guess you guys can be here. Now you guys will see me when this comes off. I'm gonna go flamingo. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave one spur in. Kind of makes less of my body around the place where the action is. <laughs> This is August. Did you guys see when that top came out, by the way? Right as it was coming out and the action was happening, I was getting a phone call. And did you see how fast I was able to get that call? It's because of this, this pouch that we made. It's the way that it attaches to the monkey beaver harness. It attaches like, uh, it doesn't just flop around super cool oh one thing I was gonna point out was while I'm here and I have this tree right next to me I'll probably put my climb line in this tree it'll be a little more comfortable work positioning while I chunk this out so again I make sure my flip lines in good here and then before I take anything off so since I have this tree right beside me tie it into it real quick and I'll have good work positioning for as I go down and chunk this out. Also, I could put a rigging line in this tree and rig this tree out, but I really don't want to be banging around on it because this side is already denuded, I guess. We have an irrigation line that runs along the blacktop. We don't want to hurt the blacktop. We don't want to hurt the irrigation line that runs along the blacktop and the little shrubs. We could rig this down we could negative rig it down, but it would be faster to put this down in pieces and surgically bomb them right down there, right in here, just in front of that shrub and just between these two big roots. I have to be careful about hitting a root on the uphill side that would shoot a piece of wood through that fence. It has to be very precise, but I think that'll be the faster way to do it. And I'll show you some of it, but I gotta get to work, so thanks for hanging out with me today. Denuded is a weird word, isn't it? I mean, why would they just call it nuded? Just while we're on the subject, YouTube, that's called a snap cut. I hate it. I never do it. People swear by it, but look, I had to cut this way past center and then past center again. So you use more fuel, you use more cutting. And then, but look, your hand's free at the end. You just pop it off like this. And you drop it in the hole. 
and it ends up looking like this my way is is to cut all the way through we call them one pass um, but I'm showing this for the for the guy that wants to figure it out and keep two hands on the saw because maybe he doesn't have a lot of experience with the saw <laughs> Now I used the weight of the piece to hold it in place and I just cut all the way through it. Still had two hands on the saw. Somebody will hate it because you weren't controlling the piece well enough the whole time. See that? One pass all the way through. The piece sat down its own weight kept it there. Right. right between the roots. People say, how do you get it to just pop out the back like that? It has to do with keeping the chain speed up. When the piece starts to sit on the bar, don't grab as much wood. Kind of slow your cut down a little because you need some, some uh, torque to keep the chain spinning while it's being pinched. Does this make sense? Watch, I'll do it again. When I get near the end of the cut, I'll slow down how much wood I'm trying to make it cut and I'll I'll let the the saw scream through the cut while it's being pinched because it's still cutting forward but it's not stopping. Once the chain stops and gets sat on, well it's hard to get it going again. <laughs> Stop telling it to grab as much wood so that uh, it could keep up with the pressure that was being applied in the pinch type of way. That's enough today, YouTube. I thought I'd show you one more thing since it's kind of cool. We're still keeping the little manzanita here, right? Uh, we don't want to damage the irrigation that runs along the edge. That's not a problem. And we want to protect this shrub. So the idea is if we can keep that tree on the stump when it lands and we can support it on this side with this log, then the shrub will be under it and it'll be okay. And this area out in here is fair game to impact. There's no plumbing in there. So that's the plan. We want to hit this log and, and keep the butt on the stump. If we have a big open face like this, then these cuts won't meet up until the thing's down on the ground. If it was only opened up on the top, like this much, or on the bottom, like that, well then when the cuts meet up, the hinge breaks and it falls away from the stump. Now, this Waiting jaws here, Pac-Man is, in case the terrain causes it to roll toward the driveway. But I'm hope I'm hoping I can just get it to just stay, just tip over and stay. <laughs>
this protected that little manzanita from getting destroyed. And the stump still has fibers connected that are keeping it from rolling off. Cut it right here and then show them how it still stays attached.